the summer of 1808, in response to Portuguese pleas to help them evict the French invaders, and to the Spanish peace that risen with Napoleon's brother, who had been imposed on him as their king, the British sent an expeditionary force to Portugal under the command of Lieutenant General Sir Arthur Wellington, later Lord Wellington. After some initial skirmishes, the French were soundly beaten at the Battle of the Mary. However, Wellington seen the command of the British forces in Portugal. Towards the end of in Spain, Spain, where British ships could rescue his forces. At the Battle of Corona on 16 January 1809, Moore defeated the French, and his army was safely evacuated to England by the Royal Navy. He was, however, mortally wounded during this battle. With the French once again invading Portugal, Wellington returned to the peninsula in April 1809. This was the beginning of but returned to Portugal at the end of the summer. The French invaded Portugal once again in 1810, but were defeated at Battle of Sarko on the 27th September. The French were then held back from reaching the capital Lisbon over the winter by Wellington's army at the lines of Torres Vedras, a stream of defensive forts they constructed in the sounds of Fuentes de Noro and 
next showing of the Diorama audiovisual presentation will be in six minutes. There are 21,500 figures and 9,600 horses on it. If you imagine each figure represents nine men, you'll have an idea of how many fought in the battle. In total, it was nearly 200,000. The model does not show a single moment in the battle. It depicts all the major events during the nine hours of fighting, as well as some of the individual actions of soldiers and civilians. The Duke of Wellington is at the crossroads where the road to Wavre, where the Prussians are, meets the road from Charleroi to Brussels. He's placed his army in a defensive position, stretching three miles from east to west behind a ridge. Three quarters of a mile away, Napoleon cannot see the full extent of Wellington's troops hidden behind the ridge. It's not a steep slope to the top, but it's covered in crops and the ground is soft and slippery. The attacking French infantry and cavalry will find it exhausting to advance after the crest. On Wellington's right is the Chateau Hougoumont, held by British guardsmen and a battalion of Germans from Nassau. It's here that the battle begins, shortly before 11.30 in the morning as the French try to capture the chateau. Throughout the day, the French try again and again, but never succeed. Around one o'clock, Napoleon's artillery begins fire, but many of the Allied troops are protected behind the ridge. The first major infantry attack on Wellington's center and center left, beginning soon after half past one, is withstood. The Allied cavalry counterattacks. Sergeant Wirt of the Scots Braves captures the first eagle of the day. The next French attack, around four o'clock, sees an immense mass of French cavalry bearing down on the right of Wellington's line. 4,400 horsemen on an 800 meter front charge. French riders later say that they were forced so close together that their horses were lifted off the ground. The Allied infantry form squares which are impregnable to cavalry, while the Allied artillery devastates the French riders and horses. After an hour, another 4,000 French horsemen join the attack, but without success. The squares hold firm.